the love one Allah who is Ar-Rahman Allah who is Al-Mannan La ilaha illa Allah Muhammad Rasulullah Muhammad is the messenger To Allah is our return La ilaha illa Allah
I try to look for the definition of secular, and it's very interesting that the similar words are worldly, material, and unreligious. So there's a question to call in Nigeria a secular state anyway. That is just for your own thoughts. Very close to the discussion of Islamic banking is the issue of riba and profit, rape. Oftentimes, particularly when you talk with enlightened people, they will explain to you why the two of them are the same. And there is no argument that that says they are similar anyway. But the truth of the matter is, they are different. If Allah says they are different and if he has declared you an enemy, and that there is no increase that will come to you, you just think you are increasing money, no increase will come to you, then you must know that there is a big difference. So I, hope that, uh, I want to mention to you that the difference between this river and the profit is what we call a counter value. Now, Riba has no counter value. The man sits there. The bank comes, collects the money. Ogata, Ogata, Uala, Uala, Queen. So if the bank goes with that note, if the bank goes on that note and gives a loan to somebody, if the business fails, the bank doesn't care. Even if they have to sell your share and sell your hand or sell your kidney, they want the money back. In fact, it's better for you to die than not to pay that money. This is what some of the banks did. My brother, Popola, is there. We were all there at that time when things was very, very hot. Some banks even employed Babala who was appropriating. <laughs> very interesting, Abby. Very interesting. The, yes, they use traditional means to collect money from banks. Some of them use bouncers, guys with big chests. Come to you, we take it to the back room. Where's the money? We throw you down. You will be forced to look for the money anywhere. Now, so he does not have a counter value, he just takes his money and collects rent on the money he gave out. But the other one, where you make profit, we have known, we have seen that he has what we call a counter value. There's an effort. Whether you are carrying yam from a uh, Mile two to so mile twelve, you have made an effort. Whether you put it in a wheelbarrow and you push it from Agege to Maryland to sell, you've made an effort. Whatever you add on the value of that it becomes allowed for you. There's a possibility of risk. While you are carrying the yam, it can fall and break. You can be hit by a car. So that is also there in terms of the profit. And then there's a liability, the possibility of the loss. You can get here and get to the market and it doesn't just sell. So this is what differentiates them. I possibly I brought this up because in the discussions, particularly with the enlightened people, they will try to convince you and shake in your faith that profit and river are the same. They are not. Now interestingly, I had this slide before Parashul uh, spoke. Yes. And it is interesting. So the views of some non-Muslims on Islamic banking, I just picked two, so I don't waste time. The first one is from ex-president Lucien of Asanjo, and he says, and this particular quotation is used for Islamic banking training all over the world. And he said it out of anger after the Okinawa summit in year 2000. He said, and that all that we have, we have borrowed. Up to 1985 or 1986 was around 5 billion. And we have paid about 16 billion out of that 5 billion loan. Yet we were still being told that we owe about 28 billion. That 28 billion came about because of injustice in the foreign creditors' interest rates. If you ask me what is the worst thing in the world, and what the worst thing in the world is, I would say it is compound interest. Interestingly, in Africa and some of the third world countries, the amount of interest of division, if they stopped it, they would be able to, if they stop paying interest, they don't. In some of the countries, the interest payment is more than their health budget. So they will be saving lives. Interestingly, another, another popular one is from Pope Benedict the 15th. After the Vatican had lost 
a lot of money in the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009, and which is still continuing up to now, he said, in this atmosphere of crisis, banks should take Muslims as an example, and that the Islamic finance system may pave the way for the establishment of new rules in the Western world. I don't need to say anymore. Where your enemies can identify a good in you, it means that is really what you are. So Islamic finance is already speaking for itself. Now, people would ask themselves the question, and uh, we found the following myths very common. That is what people believe is about Islamic banking, which obviously aren't true. They say that investment based on Islamic principles are for Muslims alone. Those who practice it have seen that even more non Muslims enjoy more than the Muslims. They also say that investment options are limited. Oftentimes, when we sit down, especially in our associations, we try to structure Islamic things. We find out that, oh, we can't do it, and that, so on. It's also a myth, we don't believe in it, those of us who practice. The return on investment is low, and this is the cheap source of finance. It's a myth. It's not really cheap. But we'll come to that and we'll explain to ourselves what is cheap in it. Then that there are limited transaction structure, no. So who can do almost anything uh, the conventional financing can do, except for all this over speculation, which they do, which they are options. And the rate is used. That there is a limited investor market this is also a myth. Now, let's go into the contracts and why contracts. What we are used to in the banks is to go to the bank and collect an offer letter, which is the agreement between you and the bank for a loan. But in Islam, from the second chapter, Allah says, when we are uh, dealing with ourselves, we should do what? We should put it into writing. Call it strike and put it into writing. We will not only put it into writing, we will also do what? We will call witness. So the basis of Islamic banking is that there will be a contract for everything we do with the institution. A contract which you will see, which would have been written and which will be witnessed. So that's a remarkable difference. It's not a contract between the bank and the customer. It is in the convention. A witness will be called. And if the witness is not acceptable, just like the Quran says, the people are not born. So one of the characteristics of, of the contract is that the source is from the Quran and the Sunnah. Another is that mutual consent of the party is required. You can't force it onto somebody. If it's not signing, then it's not a contract. Then we must call reliable witness, just like I mentioned. Three things are very important considerations. If you look at these three things in any transaction, whether it is a banking transaction or between you and your friends, you should be able to say it could pass the test of the Sharia. Three of them, the first is Garar, which uh, the closest English word to it would be the unambiguity. And then what we say about it is that Aki is that of a honor in Islam, Islamic contract. If it is a blue car, 2011 model, tinted glass, black seat, let it be clear <coughs> in the contract. Let there be no hidden process or hidden terms. Then we'll have the seal, which talks about anything that looks like Nambian, a hijab, a yoche. Somebody seems to always be loose, while somebody will always be gaining, who will not be involved in it. Then, of course, Riba which we have all the verses and we've heard so much about. It's all there. Allah declares enmity with whoever does riba. So interestingly, in Islamic banking, the software that you would use, that a bank would use, will have no interest calculation. So that was the first challenge we had to uh, uh, surmount. Yeah, we didn't find any, anyone that existed like that. Because interestingly, I also worked in quite a number of banks, and we had banking software that if you took in, if you took a loan today and you paid it before afternoon, to still charge you interest. Let's do was set up like that when we were setting up to market. Now, some of the contracts that have been accepted 
world wide in your area, that is where there are no, uh, there's little difference of opinion, are the ones that are going to explain to you. They now, now explain the products the bank will sell to you, and will go into the main topic of development. But before then, I would like us to touch on the challenges and the opportunities because we are all here because we are Muslims and we help ourselves not only socially, also commercially, and, all, and so on. So, I deal with Musharaka. Musharaka is um, an equity product. It involves two people coming together to do a transaction. The interesting um, characteristic of Musharaka is that the two people will contribute the capital. The two of them will contribute the capital requirement. So, it's fair, it's, uh, the customer brings his money, the bank brings his money, and they do a venture. At the end of the day, they calculate the net profit and they share the profit according to what they have agreed. Because it's possible that one of the partners is active, it's possible that one is dormant, so the, the profit will depend on what they have agreed. However, the losses is one in percentage of the capital contribution. Fakiru. The reason why I say Fakiru is this. It seems to declare under the Sharia that you cannot lose what you don't have. So for somebody to lose money in a transaction won't feel that you have already you, have, you had money to put into it. So that's the first one. Very clear, very simple. It has been copied in the conventional as joint venture. Now we have the Mudaraba. I have given it the name a young man's dream. The reason is this. Oftentimes you have a knowledge and you have nobody to fund the knowledge. When you go into a bank and they will say, no, we can't deal with you. Sorry. Mudaraba allows one party to come with some intellectual property and allows another party to bring the cash to do the business. Profits are shared as agreed. Losses are borne by the one who brought capital. You cannot lose what you do not have. If we did this modera, it's possible for you to fund your LPOs, all sorts of things, construction, supply, and all that. Because you will come in as the one who knows the business who can do the transaction. The financial institution will come in as the one who has the cash. And um, that way you build your business. Let me also let you know that because there are two parties in any of this contract, the bank can play any role. So you will find that the Lotus uh, allow fund is the Mudaraba. Where Lotus Capital brings its intellect has been able to invest money for people. So they didn't bring money, they brought the intellect to invest money in Sharia financial aid. And the customer brought his money as the one who is investing in the Mudaraba. So we go to the, the, to the deed, we share profits. If there is a loss, the owner of capital there is a loss. Mudaraba allows for all direct costs to be paid, and as such, it will look like the Mudari, that's the guy with the intellect, has the right for the, to the claim of certain monies for transport, for certain efforts before the profits are right. Because you can only share net profit anyway, you can't share gross profit. So I think we're clear on that. The other party in the Mudaraba is the one that brings money, it's called the Rabba Mount. I don't want to bother you about it. I brought this one alone to say Muraba. Muraba is, is a sale contract. And it is used very, 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 very often in Islamic banking. It's a very simple thing. We found out that when people say they need a loan, our psyche has been pushed towards rigorous thinking. Thinking in the way of river. The first thing you will look for is money. Whereas the truth of the matter is, is if it is a motorcycle you wanted. If somebody is able to give you that motorcycle, you are satisfied. 
if it is a car you wanted, if somebody is able to give you that car, you are satisfied. So you will go to the, the institution and say you need a loan because the psyche is conventional. And they will ask you, what do you want to buy? And then, for example, you tell them it is a laptop. And they will ask you to tell them the specification. And if you like, if you know the supplier who, who sells the best one, and you have chosen a color and a model and whatever you like about it, you let them know. They would agree with you that they will buy that laptop and sell it to you. So you know the price of the laptop. So whatever they are putting as markup on that laptop, you know. And the contract in Islamic banking is sealed. It's not because it will be dealing with uh, uh, in line with market condition, like the banks always put in their contracts. It will be very in line with market condition. So if rates go up today, they may need to take it up. But if it goes down, they will wait for one month before they give it up. Yeah. So, Braba is a sale contract. Whatever you need to go to a bank, they buy it. Say one million naira, they add 200,000 naira and ask you to pay over the next 24 months. An interesting thing about Moraba is this. Immediately the bank gives you the asset, ownership of that asset is transferred to you. I'm taking my time so that uh, people can grab some of these terms. I will explain Ijara before it is now. Ijara is our Islamic East. It's a very simple product. And uh, I've heard a lot of uh, side talk uh, concerning Lotus Ijara. But I need to mention that the Ijara of Lotus was tested in South Africa. We had a conference on Islamic banking about three years ago. We were chosen as the best. We had people from India, South Africa, uh, Kenya, all over Africa. We were taken as one of the best. What is that Ijara? Simply put, you need an asset and you went to lease it from somebody. And you have to pay the person a rental. That is a lot of money. You take a wheelbarrow and then you pay 100 naira a day. Now, what makes it clear and different from the um, conventional one is that you don't get paid if there's anything wrong with that asset, particularly when it has to do with manufacturer defect or defect before you get it to be customer. So, you bought a car today, and on that one week, the engine got no, not due to the fault of the customer. Financial institution cannot collect money. So we are the ones that do the real leases. When questions are thrown, I would expose all the differences between the conventional leases and the So how do you arrive at the JARA? The bank buys the assets, adds a markup to it, divided by the number of payment terms and gives it on the customer. Now, usually, this is come with a, a buyback contract at the end. But in Sharia, you don't force somebody into two contracts at the same time. If you are in practice, you let him pay the rentals. After paying the rentals, you offer to sell it to you. Currently, we sell every asset at 100 net, not a 5 or 3 percent of the initial value which the banks use. Interestingly, some other areas are there that are technical. We talk about insurance and so on. But we have ways around the way and it works. And many brothers have bought cars based on each other and equipment based on each other. Now, this business is very important. Oftentimes, you want an asset that does not exist. And the common position in Sharia is that the asset that we are trading on must be something that we know, we can see, we can, we can, we can pass it. This is this now contract is created to allow for such instances where you have to make an asset. For example, there is a, your business requires a, a, a machine that does not exist in the open market, or a house that does not exist today. And this is now contract is entered in the manufacturer to build that machine or house to specification and deliver at a particular time. To that extent, money can be advanced. So in all the instances we discussed, the financial institution buys the asset and gives the asset to the customer. All documentation, including invoices and ownership, must exist 
for it to be Sharia for the country. You don't just do it because you want to satisfy you do it real, as a real transaction. So this is his now. And all these contracts that I'm discussing with you operate in Nigeria today. They all operate. I cite examples. It's important for me to mention so because of your topic, which is how Islamic banking develop accelerated development in Nigeria. I don't know if the people know what how many people invest in bonds. Raise up your hand. If you know bonds, you know bonds. Good. 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 Okay, this bond is a very simple thing because some people are afraid that uh, uh, we are discussing something above board. I think it was first started in the United Kingdom. They needed money and they called the people to give them their money. And when people gave the government money, the government gave them a piece of paper called a certificate, a piece of paper. I owe you 10 million pounds. And the benefits they have on it is they put pieces of paper on it called the coupon, for which you will tear every 90 days and collect your river for giving them 10 million pounds. So that is what a bond is. It's a river product that exists in the market. Now, what Muslims have come up with is a suku. And it has a very long history on its own. What it is is actually a certificate, rather than of, a, of giving money to the government, it's a certificate of ownership of a structure, which entitles you to a profit. And that is why suku is Sharia compliant, and the conventional bond is non-Sharia compliant. To bring it home, let me explain with an example. Assuming we wanted to build Lagos State's new secretariat, and we've drawn up a budget for 50 billion naira to build this new Lagos State Secretariat. We will do all the papers and invite investors all over the world. They will bring the money, 50 billion, and then we will build that secretariat. After building the secretariat, or before building, we could have negotiated with the Lagos State government to say that we will lease this new secretariat to you over the next 50 years, 20 years, 10 years, 5 years. And we've agreed. So when it is delivered, or from the beginning, when the investors pay money, Lagos State starts paying its rentals to that project. So people get what is called an allow money for owning that secretariat. And how is it how is it divided? Of course, because Sharia is very, very, very clear on equity. Every investor will own a portion of that secretariat. So because I invested five million, I own only one room. And that person invested 50 million, he owes one floor. The profits will be shared according to that ownership. That's why they also book a certificate of ownership intangible asset. It's important to discuss Suku because most countries in the developed world now use Suku as a standard. They use it not just because it delivers the infrastructure. The possibility of being able to raise that money is also good. And you see the model. If you bought a bond from, from the US, for example, a general obligation bond, if you bought a bond from the US market, you will not be able to see whether it's the same money that they are using to fight the Muslim, the Muslims, in the Middle East. But most of those governments are very, very careless with money. It is the same money that they will use to buy ammunition and give a country that they want to destroy. And they will be putting those ammunition down as in trouble. So, also, because the Lagos State Secretariat business will be incorporated on its own. That money is separated from government activities. And the investors are interested to the tune of their own money. It's also interesting to tell you that in Islamic asset management all over the world, there is over $1 trillion looking for Islamic compliant 
investment opportunities all over the world. If they don't see Islamic compliance investment, they will not put it anywhere. When they see, they rush it and scoop all.